Hello my Soka Universe! Well, I decided to review the Copa del Rey action and a little bit of the French League action as well. Got the idea while I was working in the afternoon, so it's not now the evening. I think it was eventful enough that it deserves to be dealt with. As a little caveat, I although I saw yesterday Porto and I know there are some games, I decided to leave Portugal out of this video and really wait for the next v v video when we know a little bit more because I, I like even results and now we have a full French league round, we have a full Copa del Rey round, so I think it makes sense to do it this way. Sorry Portuguese fans, but that's the way I decided to do it. And you, the Portuguese league has such a weird scheduling at the moment that it anyway, it doesn't fit in anything really. Headlines. Well, I think the first headline is that crazy Granada Barcelona game, where an outstanding Messi and even Griezmann playing well salvaged Barca in the last second, but there were a few twists and turns along the way. Uh, the other games, I think, were not as spectacular, but will get us, at least from the names, a spectacular semi final uh, there as well. In France, I think the big story has to be that Marseille is descending into utter chaos with uh, André Villas-Boas first resigning and then being fired. Yes, exactly. Uh, and with the top four basically um, keeping things up, all getting wins. Um, and Lorient also, not on winning streak, but at least picking up a point. So. I would say uh, we'll start in the Copa del Rey. I did not see anything between Almeria and Sevilla, but who else but Ocampos would get the goal for Sevilla? He seems to be their best player, Suso, in there. And let me quickly see if Papu Gomez was playing. Yes, Papu Gomez was playing. So that's exciting, I have to say. Uh, and then uh, Suso came on for him and assisted the goal. Uh, I saw a little bit of Levante via Real, but I already saw it's, it's, it's going to be a little bit of a stalemate. And I wanted to watch Atalanta against Napoli. Probably I should have stayed uh, with that game and then switched uh, straight to the Bar Barcelona game. Uh, more on that game in my Serie A Coppa Italia review that I will do after the weekend. Uh, the game went to overtime, where actually Levante wins it uh, through a very, very, very Roger Mati goal. The guy who scored also at Real Madrid, the winner, to make it 1-0 in extra time. And then we are at the big one. I mean, boy, was Granada against Barcelona uh, an exciting match. Again, I saw the last 15 minutes of regulation on, but I saw the goals. And I mean, I have to say, the first goal by Kennedy, as such poor defending by Barcelona, you gotta be uh, absolutely dev 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 devastated. And then even the second goal, you think of Barcelona is full on attack and then they're caught on the counter attack and Montoro plays with Soldado, who can slot it home in the 47th and Granada seemingly getting a g g impressive win over Barcelona. However, they cannot hang on, it's just too much attrition. And I have to say, Messi really turned on, then uh, Ricky Puch came on, then Bele came, came on, Sergina Dest came, came on. And what they were then unfur unfurling onto uh, Granada, I mean, the last 10, 10 minutes, I think Barcelona hit twice the woodwork. Um, before they actually got uh, the goal, where Messi assists Griezmann, of all people, who's lost at home in the 88th, and then Griezmann assists Alba, very well taken goal. Again, sent by Messi. Messi, he might not show up in the stats, but Messi was outstanding. I mean, everything went through him. He ra rallied the troops. I mean, this was a great performance by Messi himself. So in the 92nd, they get the 2-2. Two minutes before the end, 2 nil down, they turn, turn, turn around. This is something that we, ahead of the game, wouldn't have thought that this Barca team has in them. But uh, that was rather impressive. And I have, have, have to say, they probably should have won it in regulation as well, given the chances that they had, uh, the, especially the the time where Moussa Dembele uh, hits the crossbar. That was a great shot taken. Continues like that into all, all overtime when Alba plays it to Griezmann, slots it home, and you think it's done and dusted. 3 2 Barcelona. So there's no way that uh, Granada comes back, but right off the kickoff, a rather soft pen penalty of the Sergina Test foul, and Fede, the one the third steps up, makes it 3 3. Finally, Frankie de Jong in the 108th. 
4-3 and then probably the goal of the evening. Griezmann cross and uh, Joao Xavi Alba with, with the outside of his foot uh, makes it 5-3. Spectacular, exciting game. And I have to say, if you wanted to need, if you needed a victory for the morale of Barcelona, I think that was that. That was really, uh, that could actually do more for um, Barcelona going forward than most of the league wins that they had so far. Because this was an exciting game, you played a decent squad and you got out of a tricky situation. Of course, I will talk about this uh, also, it connects to league. Uh, after all the talk was because Di Maria after the PSG game said, yeah, uh, I'll be happy to play at PSG and wouldn't it be great if Messi could join, which set uh, Ronald Koeman off on anything. A little bit unnecessary because I mean, yes, he probably heard it, but he did not hear the whole uh, quote. But it was a rather stupid. And then I actually had some taste for the co -cop that I decided to forego the Premier League. Yes, I had to work on the computer too, so uh, that always is a decider too. And I said, Betis Bilbao sounds interesting. I was Boring. I mean, I could get work done. Let's put it that way. Um, and then you think that Betis had won it when Juan made the 84th after a goalkeeping mistake makes it 1-0. Um, However, Bilbao, who was the better team overall, never gives up in a 94th. Basically, the last kick of, of, of the game, Raul Garcia can make it 1-1. One, one. And then you think maybe there could be something going on, but except when Teo came, came, came from Bay Bay, so took on a few defenders and uh, there was some, some, some danger there. This game was headed straight for penalties and um, Bilbao goes first, converts all the all the penalties, but Sergio Sar Sar Canal, there was a good, good save and then Juanmi actually tries to be cute and has his panenka saved and then uh, Berchiche can slot it home and Bilbao moves on to the semi-finals. I have to say, I honestly, given that Bilbao is already playing a Copa del Rey final from last season in April, and they have now a pretty clear route, as we'll see, uh, to the next final. I was actually rooting a little bit for more Betis, but you know, we might get the classic Barcelona uh, Bilbao final because we have Sevilla playing as Barcelona. That's the big name matchup. It's not a foregone conclusion I have uh, at this moment, but. Barcelona plays like to play against Granada and avoid the mistakes on the back. Bar Barcelona, of course, very fav fav favorites. But Sevilla, underrated team, but they usually don't perform in on the big occasions. Athletic Club against Levante is a, pales a little bit in comparison with that one. Uh, on the weekend, just we have again Bilbao against Valencia. We saw in La Liga uh, with Atletico against Celta Vigo. Betis, Bar, Bar, Barcelona. That's one of those games that you got to get to watch because there are many, many goals usually in there. Uh, in France, we had Bordeaux against Lille, where uh, the game was actually a little bit more open and more level than the scoreline might such as this, with advantages Lille, surely. Uh, Yaziki breaks the tie in the 50-54th and then a corner kick for Bordeaux launches a counter-attack for Lille uh, where Araujo is played free and uh, Timothy Vea is on the, uh, ru running with him and he's not selfish, he plays it over to uh, Vea and it's 2-0 Lille. Bordeaux could have maybe scored one or two goals but in, in, in the end it's David after Iconé assist in the 89th who gives them a 3-0 win and they stay of course top of the table. Lyon rather unexciting 1-0 over Dijon although Rudy Garcia playing at the team that he made his name within in a way. Lucas Paqueta from Milan um, scoring the winner there. Um, we see here Rennes Lorient 1-1. One, one. I haven't seen any, any, anything from there, but um, Monaco against Nice was uh, also also interesting because it was all Mo Monaco. They only have a 1-0 lead at the half through Ben Yedda pen pen penalty with the first chance Nice can equalize in the 4 47, but Ben Yedda with a thunderous shot after an indirect free kick through the wall. Really, really nice this goal makes it. 2-1. Uh, I overlooked the 2-2 of Marseille and we have to talk about the chaos of Mar Marseille. Uh, as I already alluded to in my uh, headlines, and I almost would have, would have forgotten it, that would have not been good. Great. Let me, let me put it up that because uh, that was actually an exciting game, uh, the last Marseille game. 
we had the big riot at the train uh, at, at, at train car, but this is not what made Andreas Borch step down. No, uh, Marseille bought a player that he didn't want to, and he couldn't accept that. And then he said, "Yeah, he anyway won one went to already leave." And then he said, "Okay, goodbye, I'm going." And the club didn't accept it, and actually fired him. He said, "No, we don't accept this." You stay in contact, but we fire you. I guess they want to uh, get some money back from Vivier because otherwise it, all, it doesn't make any sense. So now a youth coach uh, is uh, the trainer or the, or the coach of Marseille. They have been looking at a few candidates who all have denied. I think Marseille is in utter chaos. And that was a team that two months ago, we thought they could make a title challenge. It is an utter, utter disgrace what's happening at OM. However, the team actually responded well. I mean, it was a lucky lead at the half time, but Tovin Milik in the 37th and, and uh, just, just before the half gave them two goals uh, assisted by Al Al Alvaro. However, Lance came out roaring. In the 46th, they get the 1 2. In the 61st, they make it 2 2, and they probably should have won it because they were just pouring over Marseille. But Marseille, a little bit, teeny bit, get, get, get getting off the Schneid with the losing streak and getting a, a lucky point. Um, PSG Nîmes, like the Lille uh, result, was a clear scoreline, but after Sarabia scores the 2-0 in the 36th, actually Nîmes had quite some chances and probably would have deserved a little bit more. Um, the, Dami the Di Maria goal to open the score in the 18th was nicely played, and Mbappe shot was also a great shot there. And uh, then the big name cra uh, clash, which didn't mean anything because they're all, I mean, a man man a lot. It was a relegation battle between Saint Etienne and Nantes. I think Nantes were, were a little bit better, but um, in, in the end, they cannot hold on to, to lead and Camara uh, equalized after Colo gives Nantes the lead uh, for Saint Etienne. Yes, there were chances on both sides, but uh, it ends in a 1 1 in a not very good match. And so in Ligue 1 now, we have. Not many changes. The only thing that changed is that Brest is all, all over to Nice. Everything else stays the same, but there's a big change uh, because of that little win and the so and so PSG performance. You know, Neymar out, he's about to uh, renew his contract, by, by, by the way. That gave the PSG rating a big dip and Lille got a big boost. And so suddenly we have PSG only at 42%, season low. They were 51 at the uh, uh, just at the weekend. And Lille is already third, 31. They are the big uh, winners from um, that point swing there. On the bottom, watch out, Lorient is still in 18th. That's already the relegation spot, but they have a game less. If you and you see it already in the chance of relegation, they are level with not. If we do it, if you just Lorient is actually ahead of not, I personally would love, would not like to see not go, but I think Lorient would definitely deserve to stay in league. Uh, look at the green and red red bars. Who are the surprises and? Uh, not so good teams. Marseille getting more back to where the probable should be PSG with the red bar. Expected standings. Yeah, it's a three-way race at the moment that Mon Monaco maybe could join. I think they're still a little bit too much behind. Uh, then Rennes leads the pack of the Chasers. We have to see. I think Marseille will drop further off losses as a promoting is uh, playing a spectacular season. Up until Bordeaux, those are the teams that play for Europe. Starting with Reims, 11 down, it's more or less uh, Reims to Saint-Étienne, a little bit surprisingly, given how bad Babel they're playing. Uh, that's the safe fish zone, and then Lorient, non, Lorient and Nantes for less spots, Dijon and Nîmes seem to be gone. Um, on the weekend, we talked about in the previous video, um, OM against PSG is of course the big one. However, we don't know if it's gonna, gonna, gonna be played with all the tensions going on in Marseille. Uh, Lille playing at Nantes. Uh, we have Monaco at Nîmes and we have Lyon against Strasbourg. So all good games. Well, that was it from France and from Spain for uh, this week. Uh, was rather exciting, especially that Bar personal game was great. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line if you want to add something to what I said here. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists uh, that you might give interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my uh, channel to give you all the updates, all the things that rotate in my soccer universe. And with that, 
Have a great day. Thank you.